Hi, I'm, I'm Gloria Cabral. Welcome to my kitchen. And today we'll be doing grilled chicken, grilled vegetables, a nice little grilled uh, baked dessert of apples and all these wonderful flavors. And we're doing this for the love of food. Come on in. Today I'm going to start with the apples first because it's going to take longer on the grill. We're going to slowly, um, you want to slowly cook the apples because the juices will keep them nice and moist and caramelized with the wonderful sugars that we're going to add. This time I'm going to add a maple sugar. And maple sugar is just reduced maple syrup till it's in a granulated form and it is absolutely delicious. See? What we'll do is core out the centers of the apples and take out the seeds, take out all the little stems, because some people don't really um, like to deal with things like that. I leave the skin on. Uh, a lot of kids, little kids, don't like the skin, but I said there's so many um, nice and wonderful nutrients and vitamins in the skin, and it also holds my, my apples together. A lot of times we used to use these on top of well, in the fires, because my boys did scouting for years, so that was one of our treats, baked apples in the campfire. And then we'd come up with different variations, different types of sugar, brown sugar, white sugar, and now with our maple sugar. Nice and easy, my apples already have been pre-washed, and I pre-wash all my vegetables and fruits before I use them. Very simple, all you do is cut it, you clean it in half. I put down a little bit of butter, into it, a little of the maple, nice maple sugar. And when that melts together, it'll make a nice little caramel. I prefer nuts and raisins. And you put in what you want. Some people like a little bit of chocolate in there, just some chocolate bits. And I fold them nice and neat. And that's how we do it. So I'll do all three at the same time because a lot, a lot of times it's easier to do production work and do them all the same time because it works a lot faster. So I'm not going back and forth. So I showed you how to do it and now we'll do it a little bit faster. A little, you can put butter or sugar first because they're both gonna melt together. And a little bit of my butter on top of my sugar. I love the flavor of maple. Uh, I will replace a lot of times some or all of the maple sugar in my recipes, especially if I make like maple walnut cake with a streusel, or I'll even put it in my marinades of um, chicken, a nice chicken and maple glazed, which is wonderful. See, nice and easy. How long did it take for dessert to be done? I think about two and a half minutes. And then I can put that, I can prepare this ahead of time if I want, say I have party or I'm having people over and we have maybe 20 people, I'll cut up my apples, put them all in the fridge and get them ready. If I even cook it ahead of time it would be fine because I'll, all I'll do is warm it up when they come in or serve it at room temperature. And I never throw anything away if I can. My apples that would be left over if nobody ate or we had extra, cut that up and put it in my pancakes the next morning or put it in some of my um, a nice bread pudding would be wonderful and slowly cooks and that would be part of breakfast. Okay, nice and easy and I'll be right back. I'm gonna put these on the grill. Okay, now I just put the apples on the grill so they're gonna slow cook while I get all my vegetables ready. And the reason I'll do my vegetables first is because we have, you know, I don't want cross-contamination of my chicken to, and I can serve my vegetables at room temperature. So I'll pick out, ooh, let's see what we have. We have some beautiful eggplant and peppers. And peppers come in so many different colors. It adds a variety of what you want to put on the plate. I like textures because they are soft. When you're cooking different vegetables that are soft, you don't want everything to be soft and mushy. You want them to be palatable, crunchy, uh, a lot of different textures going on. Asparagus, one of my favorite things I've learned to love. Summer squash, and this is the time of the year. Uh, right now we're getting ready to plant all our vegetable gardens. 
Some of us like them, some of us don't. I have a hard time sometimes planting my garden because I don't mind playing in the kitchen, but playing in the garden is another, another world for me sometimes. I try to keep things simple, and what I do is I use Italian dressing. Any store-bought brand that you prefer is fine, and I always like to adjust it with different things. So I just put some in here, and this I'll use for my chicken too because I don't want to spend, as much as I love being in the kitchen, I don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So I try to find different things that will make my life easier. So I have some nice herbs that I got from my garden, some parsley, some basil, just a little bit. Love sage. Um, my grandmother uh, used to grow it in her garden. My mother-in-law's mother used to use that as a remedy for stomach aches and different things. They would mix it with egg and they call almost like an egg cream. Some nice thyme. And I had two different oregano's here. This is the Italian oregano, and I have the Greek oregano. So it adds to a nice little flavor. What I did learn from some friends of mine from Sicily is that the Italian oregano, what you use is the flowers when they start budding. You take the flowers and you dry them off. Dry them up, and in the wintertime I have all kinds of herbs hanging from my windowsill. So that's what you sprinkle on as a garnish later on. See, cut them nice and thin. And always watch where your fingers are going. Make sure the knife is rubbing against here so you can pay attention to where your knife is so you don't cut it. Slowly move back while you're chopping. And you wanna make sure the hole on my container is big enough. I don't want this to get stuck inside. And this is adding my own special touch. You always wanna add your own special touch to your food. That's what makes it yours. See, we'll just get the top on there. And this is my niece's water bottle. She wasn't using it, became mine. See? We share a lot around here. All right, have a clean container. I always have a clean cotton board. Sometimes you can put a little wet paper towel under it so it doesn't move, and your knife. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep all my vegetables, and you do them in different ways because you want different cuts. I can go long if I want, if I was using this uh, for like a lasagna, to make a vegetable lasagna. But this one I'm gonna give a little bit bigger chunks. So when I grill it, it's more for a per person. And the meal today will probably, we can make for four adults and two children, or for hearty eaters that really enjoy eating a lot of food. All my extra leftover vegetables I save because in the morning I love to throw them into my eggs. Or again, I'm the queen of bread pudding around here, as many will say. I cut them, my peppers, this way because when I, I use these small ones, I don't throw anything away. I use the smaller pieces if I'm going to put into a macaroni salad or anything else because uh, I like a more uniform look on my vegetables. And we have, we cut off all the ribbing, all these ribbings here, because you don't want to eat that. Anything you cook, you want to make sure you want to enjoy it. You don't want to be picking out pieces of things in your mouth and that are uncomfortable to your taste buds. Like I said, I like using different colors. Peppers, we get orange and black, yellow, red, green. You know, almost any color you can think of, you can probably find, because the market nowadays has so many different brands and you try different stores. You can go to specialty stores, pick out special ones. Um, that may cost you a little bit more. I would say learn what the people will eat. You don't want to spend, you have to be thrifty in cooking. You don't want to spend a lot of money if people aren't, don't know what it is yet. So if, I, if I'm having a lot of children, I'm not going to spend, you know, eight and ten dollars on a piece of meat until they've learned how to do that. And that's part of educating all your friends and family. When they get in my house, they appreciate a nice porterhouse steak or a nice piece of chicken or pork, so it tends to cost me more every so often. Okay, so what I wanna do is just rinse out the seeds. See, now we have round shapes, so this will cut into some strips, but I want them a little bit bigger so they don't fall through the grill. And it's another look, so it's another look, another texture. And we'll grill off some, all these uh, different vegetables. 
if I'm making, a lot of times what I'm doing, if I make salsas or something, that's when I use my smaller pieces. But like I said, I don't throw those away because you can always use them somewhere else. See, doesn't that look pretty already with all the wonderful colors? Food is one of those things that no matter what in life, you can always come back to your comfort. And that's why we say for the love of food. You can have a bad day and somebody give you a piece of chocolate and you have the biggest smile. You can go out for a nice dinner that you didn't have to prepare. Somebody's taking you out to a special occasion and you're just gonna have a nice smile. It's all about food. Okay, the eggplant. This is a nice firm eggplant. Not a lot of blemishes, not any blemishes on this one, which is very nice. There's different ones. You can get the long, a longer Japanese, which is about this size and thinner. I've seen the real long Italian ones that tend to go about this size, and they are absolutely delicious. When any of these vegetables are in season is the best time to use them. As the seasons change, you change to them. In the winter, you have more of your potatoes because that's what's fresher for you. A few tomatoes and my summer squash. And these I'll cut a little bit longer, just for another look. See? Depending on how thick they are and how hard they are is gonna be how long you cook them. I can't just put them all on the grill on the same time because they will cook differently. And see with the onion, you have to be careful because of the rolling. So I usually peel the skins. Again, if I have a lot of onions, I don't throw away these skins because they are delicious when you're cooking hard-boiled eggs. They call the Armenian women, which I read a whole article about, and I started doing it ever since, save all their onion skins and they put them in a pot and they will put all their hard-boiled eggs in them. And then they boil it and it changes the white egg to a brown color. But it tends to change the flavor a little bit. I find it takes some of the sulfur flavor out of hard-boiled egg. They use it for dyeing. Onion skins have been used for dyeing and many different things. See, nice and thick, but you still like this, be careful. And I'm just slicing carefully. I'm not going straight down, I'm kind of going forward a little bit so I don't slip. And then when I get the last piece, I will clamp it here. And again, I would save all this to cut up for later some nice onion, which is one of my favorites, and asparagus. They tend to dry out in some of the stores at the end, so I trim off the end part, part where it's a little woody, and bark, and I'm, again, I'm trying to watch where my fingers are, and clean that up. If I have a big presentation of them, I'll take a peeler and just Peel off the little woody part. But where I've trimmed most of them, that's not too bad. I'll use, even make them look like pencil spears because it looks nice. But this is for the grill. I don't want them to be too small. All my vegetables already have been pre-washed. And we're gonna put this in here for now. Shake up my wonderful Italian dressing. And just pour it over. The oil will help it keep on the grill so it doesn't really stick and I will put some in between every little area because I don't like a lot of, you know, you don't want it to stick on the grill, but it helps with the flavor and the coloring. You have sugars in here, you have oils, you have wonderful different flavors that you choose. You can make your own vinaigrettes or oil and vinegar thing with one part, which is like, say if I put one ounce of uh, vinegar and three ounces of oil, yeah, a choice of salad oil or olive oil or canola oil, whatever you prefer, and then flavor it to your own liking. I'll wash my hands. I've done some, again, like I said, with maple. Uh, maple. I add a little maple sugar to my maple vinegar. That is outstanding. I'll let this sit for a few minutes and then we'll go throw it on the grill. Okay, now that I've got the all um, marinating all my vegetables for a little bit, they don't need that long. You don't want to over marinate them because the salts in the seasonings will tend to dry out my uh, vegetables, pull it out, and then have a lot of water. So I'm going to get ready for the chicken. So I just pick up all my stuff and 
Though I can use the same cutting board because I don't have any cross-contamination, I'm just going to use a bigger cutting board for my chicken. Make sure your chicken's washed. I, what I did is I, I'm going to show you how to cut up a chicken, but in my house they prefer to have chicken breasts which is you know, something that people don't like to use a lot because it's, they say they dry, but we're not gonna make them dry. We're gonna make them absolutely delicious. This is a, a roasted chicken, so it's quite big, so you can get quite a few pieces out of it. I take out my little pop-up timer, and there's different ways you may wanna cut it. I tend to start taking, removing the thigh using a butcher knife, and this is a little bit, a little more flexible easier to get in and a lot of my work is done with the tip part of it. I'm not a butcher so you'll have to bear with me because sometimes we get a little vicious on our pieces but they look good when they're at the end and they taste good so it's even better. See, try to always cut away from you. See, Most of my time I do pastries though. For many years I had to learn how to cook. I started cooking when I was eight years old with my mom who had to learn when she got married because she never cooked. And she had to learn the whole process, which was a whole different thing because she was brought up in Cuba and she was brought up very um, spoiled, I would say, with, with maids and everything else. When she came to this country, it was a whole new way of cooking. So she got her first Better Homes and Garden cookbook. And when I got older, she got me the 1955 edition, just like hers because that's how I learned to cook. And I made my first meal at eight years old. We'll get an extra plate aside here to put our pieces. Now this would be the drumstick and the thigh. Okay, and my, the, again, the reason why they like the breast is because they don't like bones. I don't know about kids nowadays. They just prefer, you know, what's quick, simple, and easy, chicken fingers and hot sauce. So I will, though almost all little kids like the drumsticks because it has a handle they can eat with. They can pull it off. I'm sure there's other ways that, you know, the, the fancy chefs will cook. I know there's a spot when you find in here and you find the cartilage and you cut through. Well, sometimes I can do it. I find it much easier if I just snap it. Just like that. Ah. I was working with some kids once and they were, um, they, first time they've ever gotten to touch a chicken. It was an experience because they never see the chicken in this form. Like most of the time it's in chicken fingers or anything else. Um, so I would sit there and I'm purposely make the noises crack because it's like, oh, here's the bone, you can hear it. And sometimes it's like, wow, can I touch that? And I'd say, sure, feel it because this is what you want to get to know. All right. See, sometimes, like I says, I'm not the chef to cut but I do cut it every so often. I do cut a lot. This part I'm not gonna grill, but what I use that for is my stocks. And I make my own soup at home all the time. I tend to just scrape off the extra meat off the bone, carefully watching my fingers. This is something everybody should learn how to do. It's a technique. Maybe it takes a lot of cooking, a lot of, you know, a lot of time to do these things, but you want to learn to do it because this chicken was 99 cents a pound and I can get all these different cuts out of it plus my soup. With the leftover I can make a chicken salad. I can, you know, this, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with these things. Now this is a boneless thigh, okay? People will spend a lot more than 99 cents a pound for a boneless thigh. And it's quite a big piece. I would say this is maybe four or five ounces. Sometimes you can take it and stuff things inside of it. Just put that aside, find my other one. And I always clean up because I don't like, you know, you get that little slimy thing in your mouth or a chewy piece of fat. When I cut them off the bone, I get everything all prepared. I go and I will do it on a chicken breast and I re-clean them because I don't want to have anything, I don't want to give out to my friends and family anything I wouldn't eat myself. And that's when it becomes you know, it's like, ew, you see them picking out and it's like, what's wrong? And you know, they, oh, nothing, nothing. But what they're saying is it's not what they like. All right, see, this one gives me a little bit more 
trouble, but that's okay because I have the knife. <laughs> fix it. It goes nice and right back there. I'll do that with my bones too. I like the drumsticks. Sometimes I will debone them and then fill them with something, maybe a nice piece of chorizo or some other type of meat, um, vegetables inside of that. If I'm going to have a whole bunch of drumsticks like this and I'm going to put them on the grill, I pre-cook them in the oven just for a little bit. But I'll leave these like this. I'll cook those later. And I get them almost all the way cooked because one thing you want to make sure that all this meat is cooked and what happens is you have a, it's thin here and thick here so this, a lot of times this holds this doesn't cook as fast as this and you think it's all done you go eat it and it's raw and they throw it away so you don't want to waste your your food like that so I pre-cook it in the oven chicken wings I don't put on the grill because I like to cook those at a later date so a lot of times when I cut the chicken up I will save all the wings and freeze them in marinade this is the part, like I said, that when I'm doing 100 chickens, I'm fine. When I'm doing one once, once in a while, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but that's okay. Because I do it for the love of food, right? And that's why most of us do everything, because we, we have a passion for what we do, and we love to do it. Okay, here we have it. This is a very large bird, so there's a lot of chicken breast here. And I probably did this on a different way of most chefs. But that's because I'm just talking and having fun doing what I do. And I made it right along the keel bone. That's that heavy bone. And I'm using my tip just to pull, carefully pull the meat off the bone. And you'll see how it's separating right off that bone. And this way I can just grill that whole chicken breast. When I do chicken, I will do, I do a lot of my cooking once a week so I can prepare it. I will take the whole, maybe three or four packages of chicken, cut them up, clean them up, portion them, and put them in different bags. In different bags, I'll have Italian dressing, I'll have teriyaki, I'll have maybe buffalo. See, a nice big breast. And this is the tenderloin piece. This is your chicken fingers. When you go to the restaurants and you're paying, that's all that is, the only part of your breast. Nice and easy. Let me cut the other one here. I'm cut on that keel bone on the other side. Again, I would not see there's still a lot of meat and still on here. I could pick through that, but I leave. I like to leave it on because I like to make my own soup, like I've said before. And I will use that. I'll roast all this meat and then I'll boil it and I make some awesome chicken soup or chicken gravy or anything else that I would like with that. We'll do that with any any of the type of meats that I can. See, right there we have the chicken. Again, and I'll save my tenderloins for another time too because I don't, though they can go on the grill, I just like to portion out my meat differently. This is what I would call man-sized serving. This is probably a good 12 ounce piece, but that's not gonna happen here. I would rather, you know, what I intend to do is make a lot of small pieces and then have them have two or three pieces. Here's my breast on this. Take the little bone off. You gotta remember, it's a thin side here and a thick side here. You can cook it like this, but you wanna make sure they cook evenly, so I, try, I trim mine very carefully here and make it a thinner or more even layered breast. And I could just cook that as one breast, and that will go into the marinade. Still, this is a, a big size breast. I'll leave that because my husband and my friends will enjoy the bigger slice. See, come right across. My hands are up here so the knife blade is not, and I can see where my knife blade is going. I do not want to end up cutting my hand. See, smallest portions for the kids. And we'll put that into the marinade also. I also have several breasts to the side. I'm gonna these off. I'm gonna put them all here because in a little bit I'm gonna separate all that. Okay? And this is what you tend to get into the store when you buy boneless chicken breasts. A lot of times they'll say, you know, no hormones. And that's one thing you wanna look for a good piece of meat. 
You know, a lot of times people will buy the chicken fingers, all those things, but it's processed meat. And what goes into your body is, is you should be paying a lot of attention to because that's the good stuff for you. It's better to have one good piece of meat than five lousy pieces of meat. And it's better for your body to digest and everything else. This meat doesn't come with a tenderloin, it's already taken off. And it's a nice, it's a very big piece of meat. I can open it up and cut it this way, but what I'm gonna do is just trim some of it off like I did the other one. And I try to do it with nice even strokes as best as I can. So it doesn't, we make that look like a piece. And like I said, I'm having some children today, so I won't put the big pieces. So now to the one breast, I've got three servings. So much easier. These little pieces I put off to the side, I can use those in my soup. One, two. And if the, if the piece is too small or it doesn't look as well, I cut that up for my soup or chicken salad or anything else I may want. Okay. So that'll start us, let me wash my hands. Though you see a lot of dishes around here, I prefer never to wash a dish. Uh, I love just, you know, throwing things out, but I recycle so I don't throw that much out. With wet hands it's sometimes hard to open the bags. So I usually have freezer bags and that's how I marinate. And if I have a lot of chicken here, I'll have, like I said, I'll have a bag, four or five different bags with different flavors. So I'll throw some of my marinade that we use for the vegetables in the bag, and that will help with the flavoring. Put in my chicken breasts, and things I'm gonna throw on the grill. I'll throw a couple with the skin, you know. Some people do like the skin, I love it. It has barbecue sauce on it, and I will throw in the thighs and save the rest. See, nice and easy. Was that hard? Oh, I saved my tenderloins for later because that's a specialty for me. And I'll throw in the rest of the, well, most of the Italian dressing. And just zip it up. Nice and easy, no fancy bowls. No fancy anything. Oh, I think it's my hands are a little slippery and you're gonna notice that too. I'd squeeze out any of the extra air, because the air changes a lot of it. We don't want to dry out the chicken or anything else. Move it around, look at that. Nice and easy. And we'll let it sit there when we go, till we go outside and we start grilling. That'll just sit, come to room, not room temperature, but it's gonna be out long enough. It's still safe because it's not out for an extensive hours. It's only gonna be sitting here 15 minutes before I put it away and put it on the grill. So we'll be, let's bring everything outside so we can start grilling. Okay, now that we were getting, while we're prepping all our vegetables and our chicken, we're gonna see how our dessert is. I hear the sizzling sound, sounds good to me. That means our juices are flowing. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We're gonna pull these off because this is very hot. And you wanna use longer tongs or something longer so you don't burn yourself. We'll let those sit there till dessert. Now what I'm looking to do is get my temperature high. My temperature right now is about 325. This will be nice for my vegetables, which is on a high heat. But when I put my chicken on, I'm gonna want that a lot higher. So once I take my vegetables off, then I will put it in for my chicken. And we talked about different dense, different thicknesses and different things. This, I'm gonna put my, hear that nice sizzle? my onions on there because they're going to take a little longer because they are harder. I have the nice oil on it. Last thing I'll put will be my asparagus but I'm putting now my summer squash and I'll keep them together all my vegetables so this way I know where everything is and how they will cook. Beautiful eggplant. What nice eggplant. Let's see. Make sure they're coated in your sauce. Now we talked about tomatoes. I don't put tomatoes, and when I, when I grill a lot of my uh, foods, I don't put all different things on a skewer because they're gonna cook differently. My shrimp will cook differently than my um, mushrooms on there. So I put them all on separate grills or on skewers. Here's my zucchini, and I'll keep all my squashes together. 
They smell wonderful. And with all the fresh herbs and the flavor will be wonderful. I save some of the seasoning um, of our Italian dressing. So if I want to put on later, see, peppers. Peppers won't take too long. We coat them all first and I'll keep them closer to me. And I have to watch so I don't fall, have them fall in the grill. I try to put the presentation side down, which is my outer skin, to get some nice markings on it. And I try to do this very fast because as I have it open, the grill will cool. See, look at all these wonderful colors, wonderful shapes. A lot of eating and a lot of looking at things, you know, they'll say you eat with your eyes first. Well, that is so true. And you really notice that with children. If they look at something that, ew, they're not going to see, taste it because to them it doesn't look good. So we try to make all our food look good and then taste good. But it should always taste good. Now I'll put my asparagus. And I, all those take us a few minutes to cook. And I just roll them lightly because I like my um, vegetables, my grilled vegetables al dente, which means to the teeth, a little bit of crunch to it. All right. See, now my tomatoes, I can put either in a basket, if I have a lot of them, and you just put it inside here and cook it that way. But I'm going to put these just on a skewer because I only have a few tomatoes. In my house, they don't eat that many tomatoes, but they do eat a lot of ketchup, which, you know, they don't understand the whole concept. Ketchup is from tomatoes. Put those there. And I can put those on top because like I said, it won't take that long. And the same thing with mushrooms, but sometimes I'll put two skewers to hold my product so it doesn't spin around as it cooks. Because once they cook, they will change, see? Keep them at the same distance. And just poke them through. I'll do the same thing with my shrimp because the shrimp will just spin around. Doesn't that already look good? Looks very colorful, doesn't it? I'm only gonna add a few mushrooms because my husband's the only one who will eat the mushrooms. Take a little bit of my dressing, tuck that in, and close that. Now if you notice, the temperature's already down to 200, so I have to watch it and get it up higher. And then in a little, few minutes when we come back, we will um, adjust the temperatures on here to make sure it's not too hot, but also adjust everything else, all my uh, vegetables, and move them around so they cook. I just came back from washing my hands, and we're going to check. Look. Absolutely wonderful. See, they're just getting a light color on these. I don't like much more than that because it's called carryover cooking, and that means while it's still co cooling off, once I take it off the grill, it will still cook. And I prefer to put them in an aluminum pan so I can keep them warm if I like. And I just put them, again, keep them all together. Just perfect for me. Oh, there goes one, jumped, the, jumped into the grill. Vegetable suicide, not a good thing. Let's see how my mushrooms, see? It doesn't take much, they tend to fall off of these. So we always keep a pot holder around. Those are those household items that people will talk about. And I'll just put that up here for now. I'm not worried about it. Life is too short to worry. We just have fun with it. How's the onions doing? If they have a little resistance, that means they're pr uh, not bad. Sometimes they, with the resistance, that means they're not ready to be turned. And all you, you grill, this heats across. So the ones, the way my grill falls a lot of times, my back is hotter than the front, so I have to watch. Even though my heat goes across, it's sometimes it's how it's set on the area you're in. Look at that, nice, perfect. If I wanted grill marks to be a crisscross, I would just turn it at this point to a different hot area. And But I'm just going to give it a quick grill because these are already soft. So I just want a little bit of color. See? Nice, nice coloring. See, look at that. Some people don't like real dark, and some people like things darker. If I order, um, you know, my vegetables, I want them crisp and medium dark, so I can go both ways on it. These here are not um, as cooked. Let's see, maybe that one. All right, that'll be fine. So I'll keep pushing them towards the back. 
Let's see how the peppers look. Oh, not bad, not bad. Look at that, look at the nice charring on it. If I'm roasting large peppers, a lot of times I can roast the large pepper, put it in a brown bag, and let it sweat just from the heat that I can peel this off. But some, I just left it on for color and contrast to my, my wonderful grilled salad. I'm gonna hold my pan because it is a little windy out here. You know, this is New England. We don't know what the weather is for the next few minutes. You know, we might come out later and it's snowing, raining, or who knows. But we love it anyways. All right, look at that. They're coming across really nice. See, I look at, it has a little bit of softness, but not a lot. I don't want to, I don't want it to be mushy. Uh, then it's no fun. It's just that would become a stewed vegetable or a cooked vegetable till it's soft. These are taking a little bit more time. Let's see how it is. And you look for something a little, have a little resistance, but not overcooked. See, tomatoes can go up here for a sec. I'm going to take my mushrooms right off because they're fine this way. Let's see how brave I am. Ah, oh, that's not bad. Take the skewers off. Just watch your hands all the time so you don't burn them. These are our dual skewers. We use them for meats, vegetables, and especially marshmallows. Because who doesn't like a good s'more? Okay. Let's cover that for another minute or two. See how fast the temperature will drop. We're down to about 100, 100 degrees. So another two more minutes. Come right up. These will be ready to rock and roll. And then I'll get it nice and hot to put my chickens on. Okay, let's see, now we're up to about, again, 325, 350. Well, let's check on how good they're cooking. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Remember, these are a little bit softer, a light coloring on my eggplants. And this pan gets very hot because aluminum is a good conductor of heat. So I know they'll continue cooking if they're not to the right texture or the right softness that I want. But they look perfect. Looks beautiful. We'll come back in two more minutes. And while they're cooking, I will go prepare the chicken to get ready for the grill. Okay, our vegetables should be all set by now. Look at that, beautiful. What I'm gonna do, I have a bunch here, so I'm gonna carefully put them on a nice platter because I'm gonna use this pan again. Remember what I said, I do not like to do dishes. So we're gonna set them up nice and pretty that I can just put this on the table and let it sit because they're fine to be served at room temperature. Look at that, asparagus. And our mushrooms, our summer squash. Our beautiful eggplant. I've just learned to love eggplant. Nowadays, I cook it a lot more grilled because I do have a lot of friends who are vegetarian and if I had vegetarian people coming over tonight, you know, this would be great. They wouldn't have to worry about um, I wouldn't have to worry about what to serve them because I have these wonderful grilled vegetables. And all the same thing, there's a lot of um, people I know that can't have flour. So if I want to make an eggplant parmesan, I would just take these and add some sauce and cheese and that would give them a beautiful and delicious dish because you're seasoning in layers. Oop, we're going to have a lot on this plate. But that's okay because it doesn't last long around here. See, nice color. So we've already finished our vegetables, our dessert, and we're gonna get ready to put, put these right on top, add some nice pretty red color to that green and our onions. All right, I'm already getting hungry. This looks delicious. I think I'm just gonna call some friends over tonight and have some dinner. I'm gonna put this down. And remember we marinated all our chicken. See, I kept this so again, I don't have to wash another dish. So with all our marinated chicken, and I had some extra pieces also, I'm just gonna put them in our bowl that we already have our marinade in. It'll make it easier, because or else it'll be all over the place. And which tends to happen too, because that's another issue we have in the house, is food is everywhere. 
Let's just try to make it as least messy as possible. We'll put the grill down, let it get nice and hot. See how fast the grill goes? If I put this on the grill right now, the chicken may sear to it and I may not be able to pull it off. So we'll watch that temperature go up and we'll get ready to put our chicken on. Make sure when you're handling chicken and raw chicken that you keep your hands clean. I have several uh, towels that I keep attached to my apron because I'm constantly washing my hands because you don't want to get anybody sick. I always wash my all my meat when I cut it up, my chicken or whatever, put it in my marinades, wash my hands. So every so often you'll see me step off and come back on because I don't want any of my friends to get sick. And it's just a little, what they call cross-contamination when, when one bad thing goes to another bad thing. So as we keep cooking, we'll make sure everything is safe for eating. Well, we'll bring it up to about 350 right now, 400, because I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna start putting all my chicken on the grill, make sure all the little extra things aren't there. I try to put presentation side down and that's usually the side that you find the prettiest and this has a skin on it so I will put that down first. Look at that. You know it's nice when you hear that hot sear. And I told you the back of my, my grill is hotter so I try to Fill that up. I took one of my drumsticks and I took the bone out so I have a nice little pocket I could stuff it in for the kids. They would like that. Usually I'll do that when I'm feeling something different and fun at home and I'll fill it with stuffing. And they'll think that's the coolest thing. Oh, I put the other side there. Look at that. I don't want to cover my whole grill because once I turn these I want to put them to another hot spot. So this way I can get nice markings on these. Look at that. Oh. And this is my last thigh. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on top. And make sure you discard all this. Don't save your marinade again, because that's a good way to get cross-contamination. And I'll go wash this and we'll come back in about maybe another minute and I'll be right back. Okay, let's see how they look. See where it's still pink here, we know we're, we have a lot more cooking. Even with these, the, a lot of times the acids and the flavorings will change this, the color. But you watch with the heat, but I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna move it to another area. Some nice color there. If I wanted to give it crisscross like I do with a steak, I would just move it and turn it at another angle. But I'm just gonna cook these because everybody's getting hungry. They can smell it around the neighborhood. Look at that, delicious colors. And we don't like to overcook it, because remember we talked about dried, dried chicken, and it's not a good thing. All the sauce in the world is not gonna help, but it's still dried chicken. So I wanna cook them till just right. See, it's a little pink, it's still a little jumpy, but by the time I finish, I'll have them cooked nice and neat, and we'll let them sit, and that carryover cooking will finish it. And I want it to get so it's still moist inside, and I will show you a piece later. Look at that. Doesn't that look wonderful? And I'm going to put this towards the back because remember I said my heat in the back is much hotter. And we'll move them around in another few minutes. Now let's look at these apples while we're here. They're cooked, look at that, nice and soft. Just enough glaze and when I want to serve this with a delicious apple ice cream that we have already made. Nothing better than fresh homemade ice cream. Isn't that wonderful? Let's see if we, that was with the, that was with a Granny Smith. And a Granny Smith gives you a different flavor. Let's oh, see the same thing. And it changed the whole color different. That was green when we first got them to a light yellow. And I used the Gala. In our house, they prefer Granny Smiths normally because they're a little tart and hard. And a Gala, it's a little bit sweeter. And the size difference, when we talk about different sizes, they cook differently. So this one's a little bit softer. See that delicious little caramel in there? Perfect, nice crunch to it. Makes you want to eat it now, doesn't it? Everybody will be happy this, tonight when they have this for dinner. Let's see how we look here. Where I'm touching it, this is like rubbery. 
That means it's still not cooked yet. As it's cooking more, the more you cook it, the, the meat gets a little bit firmer. And we're almost there. Another five to seven more minutes, and this chicken will be absolutely wonderful. All right, let's see how the chicken looks. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Look at that. It's a lot firmer. Color on both sides. Again, I don't want to overcook. It's still juicy. It's going to cook for another few more minutes. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Presentation if you like the skin and for those who don't like the skin. And for our little guys who like to eat a little bit. Our little drumsticks, they look like little mountains. Look at that. What I'm going to do is I, I let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes before I plate it. Because what you want to do is let the juices, if I cut it now, all the juices will leak out everywhere. And then you won't, you'll have a dry piece of chicken. So we just put that aside. This one I'm going to let sit because these are nice and thick. I'll just leave these on the grill just to sit a little longer. I'm going to shut my grill off. Remember like it says, if it's too thick, it takes a lot longer. If it's thin, it will take less time to cook. Look at these beautiful chicken. How hard was that? Little Italian dressing, a little flavor, a little love. Marinate it, throw it on the grill, voila. What I, won't, what I wouldn't finish here, if we have leftover, I have a delicious roasted chicken salad. I can put, slice this on top with some nice fresh candied pecans, um, some nice candied, uh, any kind of candy nut, dried fruit would be wonderful. Could I make a chicken salad, just chop it up, some celery, onions, or just, on a piece of nice good ciabatta bread, a little chipotle mayonnaise, and I'm good. Now, while it's sitting, see, it looks nice sitting there, I'll do my presentation, because I want everybody to look at it, because we eat with our eyes first, so we want to make sure our eyes are happy. Okay. Oh, I know my boys will be dying to eat this. We tend to have a lot of people over during the weekend because everybody likes to eat and I love to cook. So this way now we have it. We have dark meat, which we would consider dark meat is the thigh and the boneless drumsticks. We have the boneless breast for those who don't like the skin and we have the ones with skin for those who do. Doesn't that look good? We'll go set at the table and get ready to have something to eat. Beautiful vegetables. Look at this. A wonderful piece of chicken. An absolutely gorgeous dessert with some nice baked apples with pecans, raisins, and we added some nice delicious apple cider ice cream with the same. Happy grilling. This is Gloria Cabral. Enjoy your friends, your family, eat wisely, and celebrate each meal for the love of food.